anywhere when a human being holds something else higher than his own personal well-being, suddenly that space is powerful and fantastic to be in and that's how it is being here. in the making of a nation, preserving the sovereign borders of a nation is the most important thing. Without a well-protected border, there is really no nation. Different dimensions of the country are working in different ways, the industry, the business, the social aspects, the spiritual dimensions, many things are happening. But for all that to happen, you are the basis if you do not give us the <laughs> a peaceful situation for us to function, none of the other things would function. All the wonderful work that's done in the harshest of climate and terrain, we hugely, hugely appreciate this. This is why on this yoga day, I ask them what is the extreme place that they have, that's where I would like to be. So they said, Siachen, so I'm… here I am on the way to Siachen. It's a… Uh, I'm… I'm overwhelmed with privilege to be with all of you. If a human being has to function in extreme situation, the most important aspects are balance, clarity, and a limitless sense of exuberance towards what we're doing. Yoga has uh, a certain dimensions which will offer a completely new dimension of strength and balance within a human being. With powerful systems like Anga Mardana, as we have done for Border Security Force, Indo-Tibetan Border Police and the CRPF, we would like to do that for the Indian Army. Angamardana literally means to have mastery over the limbs. You can make your limbs in such a way, it's almost like your body is absent. You don't even feel it to bring it to that state and this would be tremendously useful for people who live in extreme climes like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are indeed fortunate and blessed to have amongst us today the mystic Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev. Ladies and gentlemen, in conversation with the mystic. Sadhguru Ji, Namaskar. We are at Leh, the headquarters of 14 Corps. This Corps as the harshest climate, the most difficult terrain and the most sensitive region facing two adversaries. Sadhguruji, please enlighten us of your perception of the issues that need to be addressed in this region. Namaskar and good evening to all of you. There are two ways to deal with things. One is to finish off the enemy, another is uh, to finish off the enmity. I think with one adversary, if we have the will, we can very easily finish off the enmity. 
and build bridges of friendship, which is very much possible. With other, I don't wish to comment <laughs> it's a different situation. I don't think you will see relief in this generation for a variety of reasons. There is a possibility many nations which fought bitter wars, well, you see Europe, World War II is not another eon, all right? It's less than a century, just eight years ago, they fought as bitterly as any men could fight, all right? As dirty as anybody could fight. But today, they're existing as one economy, almost as one nation, beginning to happen. Problems are there, but beginning to happen. Well, we could also envision something like that for Asia. It's not… it's not impossible. There are two ways of settling it. Sometimes you kill the enemy, but it's less expensive and more beneficial to kill the enmity. Killing the enmity may not be in your hands. Killing the enmity is somewhere else. But if that is done, then forces could be used in a much different way. All this young Men and women could be used in a much different way, which is beneficial for them and for the nation. We are all very proud of you, all the Jawans. Thank you, so much. Thank, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Since we have been in Lake, we've spoken to many groups of uh, officers here and also taught yoga in various groups and battalions. The level of commitment with which the forces operate here, this is an accelerating and uh, overwhelming experience. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It was really nice meeting you. Thank you, sir. 20th of June, 2018, we're here just about to leave for Siachen Glacier, where Indian Army has a base camp and further up, further up the Siachen Glacier, right up to twenty-two thousand feet above mean sea level, which is considered as the highest battleground on the planet. Our forces here go through a variety of… Uh, literally, the battle is not necessarily with uh, when things happen on the border. Every day is a battle by itself with the weather, with the altitude and the terrain. But uh, this is an adventurous band of young people doing this and uh, in service of the nation. And people last there for up to 180 days, staying in small bunkers. So yoga can be a tremendous tool for them. It's exciting time, driving up these uh, mountains and uh, at one point we are touching Kardung La Paz, uh, where we are touching nearly 18,400 feet MSL. We are great fan of you. <laughs> we have been listening to your videos as well. <laughs> all your videos. It's great to when this our next meeting. I will be at CSN tomorrow. All the best for you. We are heading towards Kartong La Paz and uh, thanks to the Range Rover, we are able to travel at some speed. Eighteen thousand three hundred and eighty feet among the highest motorable passes on the planet. It's our privilege to be with uh, our brave officers. Here we are, going downhill after crossing uh, Kartung La Paz and on the way we touched uh, North Pula where there's a small army transit camp and we had fun playing a little bit of pool with the officers there. <laughs> and here we are driving down to Kalsar on the way to Shiachin base camp. I think all the tourists will stop at Kalsar. Here you see some bikers and uh, lots of bikers on the road. 
many of them from southern India. This is unique, these two men are riding motorcycles and the lady in the front is riding a scooter. Heads off to her in this terrain riding a scooter and she seems to be doing great. So as you see we will pass her now. This is just uh, almost like an extension of the Tibetan plateau and it is I think a phenomenal terrain. This is a most spectacular uh, part of India. This is something every Indian person should visit. Everybody should see this place. If you have not been to Tibet, this is your taste of Tibet for you. Wow, look at the rock. Crazy. What a valley, eh? Isn't it Kanana? Are we driving too fast for you? <laughs> and tomorrow we are doing the yoga sessions, tomorrow being the International Yoga Day. International Day of Yoga, 21st of June 2018. Being here with the Siachen warriors, it is my privilege and honor to be here among the bravest men of our country. A proud moment for us to be here among you because most of the nation unfortunately does not know what men like you are going through to keep the nation safe and well. All the activity and achievements that we have in our lives are rooted in your service and sacrifice. Without your service and sacrifice in the nation, whatever else we are doing would be meaningless. So we bow down to you on this day. When we say you're in yoga, it is not twisting the body, doing this and that. Yoga means union. In some sense of union, if you are with everything else, no matter who you are, what is the nature of your activity, what you believe, what you don't believe, it will bring light to your life, for sure. And above all, being in these cold climes, human body temperature is made in a certain way. We are not built for this climate. Of course, we cover ourselves, do so many things, but there is a way to internally develop a certain level of uh, ushna or heat in the system. There is a system of yoga called Angamardana. I think if we bring this in its right perspective to people like you who are every day put through rigors of extreme weather and extreme levels of activity, it will be of immense help. This International Yoga Day, being with you is a great privilege and pleasure. We are deeply, deeply indebted to you to have us here. I am from all of you, from the whole base camp, Sadhguru Ji, who was our Guru, I will give you all the thanks. Thank you so much. I am Sadhguru Ji Maharaj, Patita Simulator Yoga Center, Yogi and Poji. One thing is I am not a Maharaj, no kingdom, all right? <laughs> And what is the similarity between a yogi and a foji? Both stay awake in the night. <laughs> One is constantly guarding against the external enemies, another is constantly guarding against the internal enemies. <laughs> and both are committed beyond their life. Whatever they're committed to, their commitment is beyond their comfort, their well-being, their likes and dislikes, even beyond life and death. For both of them, this commitment is important.